Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and welcome to the next exciting episode of The Others, a series looking at game engines that probably don't get as much attention as they deserve. And today we are looking at Urho 3D, a name I am probably screwing up because it's named after a Scandinavian fish. Uh, but um, yeah, Urho 3D, open source, MIT licensed, C++ powered engine. It's been around for probably a little bit over a decade now, in constant development. Um, available at urho3d.github.io, of course that link will be down below. I also did a closer look at this a couple of years back. I will throw that in the links down below as well. If you're not familiar with that series, Closer Look series is kind of like reviewing game It just gives you some hands-on time. It kind of combines a review and a getting started tutorial all in one. Anyways, back to the others. Today, the Orho 3D engine we are looking at, as I mentioned, cross-platform, 2D, 3D game engine, completely open source, MIT source code license, which is always a nice thing. And one of the cool things about the Orho 3D game engine is it's actually become the underlying technology behind other open source projects, specifically um, Urho Sharp, a port of this by Xamarin that we will look at in a second, as well as the Atomic Engine, which I believe sadly now is quite defunct. And if you look through the uh, feature sheet here for the Urho 3D Game Engine, you will see most of what you expect. There's no Vulkan support yet, but you can compile to um, OpenGL, Direct3D, uh, OpenGL ES, and WebGL. Um, it's got all of the features you would expect, animation, um, physics, 2D, sprites, sprite sheets, HDR rendering, PBR rendering, um, probably you name it, it's got it. In terms of platforms, it runs on uh, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, iOS, tvOS, Android, Raspberry Pi, uh, and the web via the mscripten cross-compiling technology. Uh, well, pretty much everything you would expect is built in here. Works with most major compilers, etc., etc. Um, now, the underlying code of the Urho game engine is C++. Now, as I mentioned just a few seconds ago, however, uh, Xamarin have adopted it and created a C sharp binding for it to bring it to their studio suite. So basically, this can now be used to create um, iOS, tvOS, macOS, Android, UWP, AR, HoloLens, mixed reality, etc. applications using Xamarin Studio or Visual Studio. So this kind of gives you a whole new aspect of it, so you can code using C sharp using the the Mono sharp or the uh, Urho Sharp port, or you can go back to the Urho 3D. And in Urho 3D, you've actually got a choice of languages. First off, you can work at the C++ level of things, or you can use AngelScript, a C-like dialogue, and then on top, they also have Lua scripting, Lua scripting um, support. And the cool thing is when you actually jump into the example, so here, for example, I am on the uh, GitHub webpage, and here are 51 different examples available. I'll bring up um, an isometric demo here. So you see here, it is available in uh, C++ or, yep, C++ code format here for that example, like so. Um, pretty straightforward, you see the code is uh, very clean, very simple to understood, um, quite straightforward. Uh, and then on top of that, you can also do the same thing in, do, 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 do. here is the pre-compiled downloadable version of it. And you'll notice here, if I go into share resources, data, scripts, we've actually got all of those same things available in um, ActionScript. Oh no, action, not ActionScript, AngelScript, sorry. Uh, so for example, I use the isometric demo. Let's bring up here. So let's open that with uh, Visual Studio Code, which by the way, there is an AngelScript uh, syntax plugin for Visual Studio Code. And here you can see very, very similar source code style. Um, like I said, it's like a C light kind of scripting language. Uh, there are not Lua ports of all of the examples, unfortunately. Um, and you can also go onto their website, and I don't know if I have that link ready. Uh, but you can see that the code structure between C++ and ActionScript is quite similar. Um, do I have the XAMPP? No, I don't. Uh, but you can also go to the Yurho website and run all of those examples in your browser that have been cross-compiled using mscripten. So that's pretty cool there. Uh, on top of that, Xamarin also have a series of examples they made. And actually, their examples are, to be honest, more polished, better to look at. So you can see here is a... Um, alternate reality or AR uh, version of Urho Sharp working with the uh, Android and iOS AR toolkits to you know create an AR application and various other examples such as this one right here, which I do have loaded over here in Visual Studio, you can see. So once again, it is straight uh, C Sharp code that you're dealing with this time. But again, very straightforward, clean, easy to understand code. And this example, 
is very mobile focused. Obviously, Xamarin is a .NET port to mobile platforms. All right, let me just try that again. And here is another example in action, and this is the Xamarin Studio, sorry, uh, Urho Sharp running. So you can see, you can create some pretty cool games. This obviously is a touch-oriented game, but let me just shut that down. Um, so there is a huge number of ways you can get started with the Urho or Urho Sharp. There are a number of examples to learn from. Some of them aren't the prettiest you've ever seen, but uh, they are comprehensive and they basically teach you every aspect that you need to know. So if we go back here and we look at those script lists, you can see there's, um, GUI examples. There's a full, very awful game called uh, Ninja Snow Warrior. Um, there's various different examples that illustrate all the different aspects of working with Oral Sharp. And on top of that, there's also very comprehensive documentation made for this engine. Um, now, in terms of actual use of this engine, I don't know about the Urho Sharp, but there have not been a ton of published games using Urho. Uh, the most recent one I can find on Steam is Hellbreaker, which was actually just published on February the 16th of 2018. And if you watch the video in effect, it's kind of like a serious Sam sort of homage. Um, but you can see it is actually capable of creating games that are um, being sold. Reviews are actually fairly positive on this guy. So there are established games for it, but not a ton. You know, it's not going to come even close to, you know, um, Unity or Unreal or, or some of the mainstream engines for, uh, you know, a published list. This is much more of a hobbyist engine for sure. But you can create and ship commercial games with it, as is evidenced by Hellbreaker here. And there may be other games out there that I'm just simply unaware of. Um, so in a nutshell, that's Uro 3D. Now, one of the cool things about it, actually, is we go back to the, um, the downloadable here. So go back to the root directory. So this is what you get when you extract out the archive, um, not building it from source. I go in here to the bin folder, see all the various different examples we can see here are pre-compiled for you. Uh, but what you're probably most interested in here is editor.bat. Now, editor.bat is actually a script, which is pretty cool. I'm It's available I should have done it back when I was here share uh, resources data uh, scripts and you see right here editor.as well this is actually the level editor for working with Orho 3d now this is not a unity type engine in which you um, do all your logic in an integrated editor this instead is more like a scene placement type tool so you basically create a level file which is an XML file which you then load into your source code but let's take a look at that editor in action so let's go on back here so that's under the bin folder and we'll just run that start so once again though, this is simply a script. So if you need to extend the editor, uh, you just can edit that script file and you can add new functionality to it. And so that script is using and creating this. So as you can see, they have their own GUI library and template and everything else going on. So this is all created using the Urho 3D's inbuilt GUI um, tool, WebKit, uh, UI widgets, etc. And your scene is pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and just create some stuff. So let's create a replicated node, which is kind of your base node class. And then to that, we're going to attach a component. So, you know, the component entity uh, kind of setup is pretty much ubiquitous in these days and age. So we're going to go ahead and add on a, uh, let's do a train. Where is train? Geometry, train. So, so we just created a train object attached to our surface. Uh, now we need to actually add a height map for our train. Come down here, you can see, um, see train, uh, textures, height map. All right, so that is our height map data. Just drag and drop it into that spot right there. And then we'll go back up to materials and we will add a material here. Obviously, you can author all of these yourself, but I just don't want to in this particular case. So, train, and we'll drop that in here. There you go. So there you see we have created a train object in the background. It's way bigger than I want it to be, so let's just size things down substantially. And let's zoom out a bit. So there you see, that is how easy it is to create a train object in here. You can use their tool, so you can create your own texture. You can raise and lower. You can paint it like so but I'll go with the existing height map generated terrain. So there is adding terrain in your world. Nothing really all that difficult. At the same time, create, uh, we'll go ahead and create a replicated node and we'll add a uh, light. 
we will make that light a directional light. Uh, rotate that 90, I think, X. Yeah, like so. And let's just move that up a bit. And let's turn that brightness down quite a bit. So there you see. So there is our train object in the world. Like so. There is our node, our light added into the world. And then let's show, say, um, physics. So now I'm going to go ahead and create another scene object. So create a uh, replicated node built-in object, and that will be a um, sphere. Okay, and I'll press F to focus in. So there is our sphere object. Let's uh, just move that guy up quite a bit. So we're above our world. All right, and we'll scale it up a bit. So three, three, and three. So now we have this big sphere in our world with it selected, let's make this guy all physical. So create, component, a couple of things we gotta do here. So physics, we gotta do a collision shape on that, which is, predictably enough is a sphere. And let's also go ahead and create component, a physics component, rigid body. And for a rigid body, let's give it a mass of say 50, whatever. So we now have this sphere in our world. Let's go back to our terrain object here, like so. And we will create component, physics, collision shape. And this one's type is terrain. And then once again, create component, physics, rigid body. And the only thing we want to do here, drag this guy down. And we want to turn off gravity like so. So now we have our sphere in the world, our train in the world. They should, in theory, combine. Let's go ahead and run it. Now, this isn't running in terms of games logic. This is just running in terms of physics simulations, by the way. But we run that, and there you see it hit, interacted with our world, and is being physics processed. I believe it is bullet physics powering this behind the scenes. But as you can see, full full function physics engine, physics ed um, editing capability built in. Uh, works quite well, um, as you can see. Uh, let's do one more thing to our scene. So we're just going to go ahead, create one more node. On that node, we are going to make it a uh, animated model, for example. So now we've got our animated model. It has a model requirement. So let's go back down to our models. I'm just using all the built-in stuff. I'm going to use Jack Walk. Um, yeah, Jack. Yeah. So Jack comes up here, like so. We're gonna say we wanna have one kind of animation. So now we need to bring that animation up. So we just do Jack Walk animation, drag that guy over there. And then here's Jack. Now Jack needs to get a little bit bigger. So let's let's make Jack five times bigger than he is. There we go. So now we have Jack in the world like this. Let me just orbit my camera so we can see Jack. Let's hope Jack does not have genitalia so I don't get blocked on YouTube. All right, so there is Jack in the world. Pretty straightforward. Now let's go back down to our animation state here. We're gonna loop that guy. We're gonna give it full weighting, like so, and let's test it. So you see, that is the process of bringing an animated model into and consuming it in the Urho editor. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of about all I'm gonna show today. As you can see, and keep in mind, all of these tools, this basically, when you are done, when you've created your scene, you've extended out your full hierarchy here with all of your various different nodes and widgets and things and stuff all built in or your UI elements and your, your GUI, et cetera, that you've all created and you've got it all set up and working and wonderful going. Uh, all you do is come up here and save the scene as, um, and you can basically, you can dump it out as a single large static exp, um, object file, or what you're generally just gonna do is save it as a scene, the scene is an XML format, and then with like two lines of code, you can import that into your C Sharp or your Action Script, or sorry, Angel Script code, and you are off to the races. So, um, yeah, it's, it's actually, so there's there's a lack of polish in this editor. The, the functionality's there, but since they rolled everything themselves, it's a little, um, janky at times for example um all right this time i can sometimes you get over something and it won't give mouse focus sometimes it will 
Sometimes you end up kind of out of space, etc. Uh, but for the most part, everything just sort of works. It's very clean, very straightforward, very um, functional, robust bust game engine um, and again this entire editor source code is just a script um, it's actually running in uh, so if I look at editor.bat and let's just edit that script I don't know what this is gonna run that in okay let's do that some other way uh, I don't want to all right why am I not getting a right click control click shift click Alt click. All right, screw it. I'll do it this way. Drag and drop. There you go. All right, so there is what that script is actually doing. You'll notice here it's actually just running the Urho 3D player and sending in our script. Uh, where is the script? Script editor, like so. So really, all you're actually doing here is passing in that editor.as to this Urho 3D player to run the entire level editor. So you can change to this guy on the fly, or you can use this Urho 3D player to run any um, simple script that you've created. So just for example, let's flip on back over here. Uh, go back once more to the shared resources data scripts, and we'll show up hello world. There is a simple hello world script. You could just write this from the command line, uh, you know, implement your start method, and you pass this off to your whole 3D player, and you're off to the races. So the minimum program here is very, very straightforward and simple. All right, that is where I'm going to end for now. Uh, so once again, that is Urho 3D, an open source C++ powered MIT licensed cross-platform uh, game engine, which has also been ported over to C Sharp in the form of Xamarin, which is also, I do believe, they screwed this up when they released it, but I think after the fact they fixed their license to be uh, MIT as well. Let me just make sure. License, 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 license. Uh, they've got a crappy custom license again. So do be sure you check out the Xamarin Sharp license before you go. I thought they switched this over straight up to um, an MIT license, so do be careful there. But basically, they are both under open source licenses, um, and the functionality is there for both. So if you want to work at um, Urho Sharp or C Sharp, you can still use the Urho 3D uh, level editing tools, create the scene files, import... Um, uh, your models, etc., in here via the tools that are built in, such as this, um, and the very, oh, they don't actually show the formats available. Uh, so you can bring everything in and use it in either engine as you wish. So it's a very flexible engine, especially with those ports. Uh, so, and another thing I didn't showcase again today is they also have a Lua binding. So if you prefer to script in Lua over AngelScript or the use of C++, you can, but every single language is equally as important as the other languages. So the functionality between say C++ and AngelScript and um, then C Sharp on the other end are all 100% equal. So you can write a game completely from scratch or you can mix and match between the languages. Uh, so that was Urho Sharp, or sorry, Urho uh, 3D and Urho Sharp. I hope you guys found that interesting. Uh, do let me know what you thought of it down below. Um, I think it's a it's a great engine, lacking a little bit of polish, but especially for the hobbyist looking for something that was written in C plus C plus plus that they want to tinker with, this is probably one of the most accessible C plus plus full featured engines out there. Um, you know, you can actually get a game up and running in a you know a few dozen lines of code, which is, is pretty impressive. Or if you're a C Sharp developer, a Lua developer, or an AngelScript developer, Urho 3D has you covered. And once again, MIT licensed, open source, and all that stuff. Ten years development behind it. Very mature, very robust engine. So, hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you thought. I will see you all later. Goodbye.